And tonight we're happy to report the numbers keep dropping. More than 155,000 Centerpoint customers now across the Houston area are still in the dark. And crews there working around the clock to restore power. We have team coverage this evening with our crews in the neighborhood still recovering, and we're tracking the heat, making it even harder for those without AC tonight. Marcelino Benito leads us off this evening. He's live in Timber Grove. Marcelino, how are people holding up? Well, like me, there are trees down everywhere. I want to show you this is just one huge pile of trees in front of one home, but this is not the biggest problem. There's extensive damage in this neighborhood. The real problem out here is what I'm about to show you. Our lights are the only lights that are working in this neighborhood. They are in pitch black, dark, and with temperatures rising, that is a problem. We're still all in the dark. It's been nearly five days since families in Timber Grove watched the forest around them come crashing down in the storm. The trees were like, oh, and it was scary. It was scary. And the cats came shooting in. I said, shut the door, shut the door. And it kind of gave me heart palpitations because it was so violent because I've been through hurricanes and that was very, very different. Lots of those trees fell on roofs and power lines that crews are still working to assess and repair. A lot of sweating, and it, it's really hot. All of a sudden, the wind started blowing. Not too far from Denisha's home. This is where I stay. I lost my fence right here. Sharon Williams coming back home, hoping the power's back on. Hi, Katie. I'll be back in a minute. No, no power in here. Frustration no. building. Breeze was bad, but this is crazy. It's 95 degrees. We're four days without power. The whole roof just flew to the other side. There it goes. No light. For Cynthia, her apartment badly damaged too. The smell of mold as the heat rises inside already makes this place unbearable. The, this carpet is soaking wet. While they wait for the lights to come back, neighbors lucky enough to have generators setting up a charging station for anyone who needs a power boost. Line crews are dotting debris line streets, offering some hope they haven't been forgotten. But I'm hoping it's going to come back real soon. Guys, the Timber Grove area is one of the hardest hit areas in the city. We've heard that from Centerpoint and Mayor Whitmire, but we are told by Centerpoint Energy that they are working in this area and this neighborhood along with Lazy Brook, which is just across the street of West 18th Street, should be back on by sometime tomorrow. Fingers crossed for the residents here. Back to you. Absolutely. It can't get turned back on soon enough. Marcelino, thank you. All new at 10 o'clock HISD announces these 36 campuses will be closed tomorrow because they don't have power or AC. However, this is important. Staff will be at these schools to pass out breakfast and lunch tomorrow. They'll also be handing out learning packets for students. So you may not have classes tomorrow, but you could still get food at these schools. Look at your screens. Now, if your child's school is not on this list, the district says your school will be open as usual. Annie Ali Ruiz joining us live from one of the HISD schools closing. You're talking to people who feel like HISD opened too soon. Annie Ali. Well, thousands are still without power, and many believe that the school probably the schools probably should have given families and schools another day to prepare. 54 schools in HISD were closed today after the storm from Thursday night knocked down power and damaged others. But 214 were open and some feel they weren't ready. I mean, I have gotten calls, I've gotten pictures, I've gotten texts. The president of the Houston Federation of Teachers said her phone was blowing up. Opening up schools, sending people back to schools on a 90 degree day with no air. And schools, windows don't open, so what are they supposed to do? Obviously. The city, I as mayor, do not call the decisions for HISD. If I was, we would have had a different system in place. Mike Miles said only two schools were without AC and those kids were sent home. But Miles said they opened the schools to help those that are less fortunate. We recognize that some, we have kids at home whose food has were perishable, families had to Re restock and and even $50 is a lot of money for some of our families to have lost in food. We have school kids who are at home with no power, no air conditioning. It's hot. So that's one of the reasons why we should not wait to open the school if we can open the school. 
While some community members tell us the district didn't have the staff to clean up the schools, one group in East End noticed that three custodians were cleaning up the debris with brooms. A, a school nearby had trees that were down and they had debris everywhere and the custodians were outside cleaning it on their own and it was just three women by themselves. The community quickly mobilized and were able to get seven other volunteers to help. Can anybody come out? Blowers, rakes, you know, anything that you can. They worked nonstop all day yesterday and they still weren't finished. It seemed a little frustrating for our community to have to come out to do this because this was not something they've had to do before. It seemed kind of a new phenomenon. And more than 30 schools will be closed tomorrow for a complete list. You can head to our website at KHOU.com. Reporting live in East End, Anayeli Ruiz, KHOU 11 News. And here now, a look at other school districts closed tomorrow. Sci Fair, Channel View, Spring Branch, and Galena Park ISDs will all be closed. For the latest updates on school closures, be sure to also check out KHOU.com. We have an update tonight to a story we first brought you yesterday at an apartment complex right here in Houston where people dealing with storm damage have been in the dark for days. Tonight, Lone Star Legal Aid telling us they'll be visiting Independence Hall tomorrow morning to help offer help. Stephen Gowen is there tonight with the tips all renters should know if they need to request repairs this week. Stephen? Yeah, Len, a lot of people in the Houston area are still, of course, dealing with the impacts of last week's storms. And a lot of us rent the homes that we live in. So we wanted to reach out to legal experts to find out what those Texas renters' rights are when it comes to getting that storm damage fixed. Whether it's storm damage at your rental home or at an apartment complex like this, legal experts say your landlord is on the hook for repairs. After the severe weather that tore through the Houston area last Thursday. What's important to remember is that there's a legal process for requesting repairs. Eric Quadler with Lone Star Legal Aid says Texas law is quite clear. Now the landlord is required to make repairs to any condition that would materially help affect the health and safety of an ordinary tenant. To legally request those repairs, Quadler says you have to send a letter through certified mail to your landlord. In it, lay out exactly what's wrong and what you need fixed. Then the landlord has a presumption of seven days to respond, but if it's more of an emergency, they may need to respond more quickly. After that, if there's still no response, Quadler says you may have to file a lawsuit to force your landlord to make the repairs. But what if the damage at your home is beyond repair? If the repair problems are so bad that the place is unlivable, then either party, the landlord or the tenant, can provide seven days notice and cancel the lease. Still, it's recommended you consult an attorney before taking that step. When it comes to power outages, Quadler says it's usually not up to the landlord to get your lights turned back on. It's on the utility company. That's a situation where, in most cases, landlords and tenants just need to work together to try and get through it. But, and there's not much you can do. Now, legal experts say... If even if your apartment or rental home has an online portal for paying rent and requesting repairs, you still need to send that physical certified letter to request repairs for any storm damage. You also have to keep on paying your rent to maintain access to your legal rights. In Houston, Stephen Gowen, KHOU 11 News. Good point you made at the end there, Stephen. You still have to keep paying your rent while you're waiting for the repairs. Thank you, sir. Residents at an apartment complex in northeast Houston are still in the dark. Cypress Garden Senior Living lost power on Thursday. It is a 55 and up community and the people living there say it's been difficult dealing with the heat and broken elevators. I'm in the handicap room. I have a cane. I have one eye and uh, with the elevators out, it's been very inconvenient trying to walk up and down the stairs. The staircase is, is real dark even in the daytime. Today, the Houston Fire Department and the Health Department stopped by to bring both food and water. And some of the units are being powered by generators. The complex is working on setting up a cooling room, and the Red Cross will be helping out until the power is back on, hopefully very, very soon in their case. By the way, if you need help applying for FEMA assistance, you can head to the Fondy Community Center downtown starting tomorrow. Disaster assistance crews are on site from 7 in the morning until 7 o'clock in the evening. You don't have to apply in person. You can also go online or call 
the Disaster Recovery Line. You can head to KHOU.com for a closer look at all of this information in one place. A lot of places to go look and get help. Uh, we have more details on KHOU.com, including how to find cooling centers and a look at the current power outages, as we said, down to 155,000 without power. Text the word STORM to 713-526-1111. We'll text you back with the link to those stories. We've established it is another warm night out there for our friends and neighbors without power. It's difficult to keep cool with the heat and humidity. Uh, David, the nighttime offers a bit of a break, but not much. Very little. I mean, temperatures are hovering near 80 right now, mm -hmm. and they're not going to get much warm. cooler. Yeah, so we're not getting much help from Mother Nature right now. These are current temperatures. Well, it's 80 at Bush. It's 81. At Hobby right now, Sugarland is 80, Tombolo is 80, and it is humid. Even here at night with the humidity, it feels like 85 in downtown, feels like 84 in Tombaugh, Angleton feels like 86. Tomorrow's another hot one, it's a repeat. A high temp goes up to 92. If we do hit 92, we're going to be two degrees hotter tomorrow than we were today. It will feel like it's in the upper 90s in the afternoon. So cooling centers, cold shower cold tub. Anything to lower your body's core temperature helps when you can't get any AC to cool you off. We might see a slight thunderstorm chance later in the week. We'll go over that and how long this little hot spell is forecast to last when I see you again in a couple of minutes. All right, we'll get the update in. Thank you, David. Next,